Release the Kraken! Welcome back, fellow game designers. In our last one, we went ahead and brought our objects in. And in this one, we're going to go ahead and start doing the ball movement. Now, I want to uh, put out a little bit of a caveat. Um, this is not the most practical method of doing the movement controls. Um, in doing research for how I was going to approach this, I found a lot of folks were asking how to do it the old-fashioned way. So if you ever checked out my uh, making Pong in Game Maker, the method for doing that is a bit different than doing it in Unity. There are more efficient ways to do it in Unity than there are in Game Maker. Uh, that being that being the case, uh, a lot of people are actually asking how to do the old-fashioned, um, you know, movement by translation and how to do collision handling using translation methods. So I'm going to do that. Um, but to see a more practical version of it, because you wouldn't do it that way, uh, certainly check out um, Making Pong in Six Minutes by BMO. It's actually a really good tutorial, and he, he'll bust it out very quickly using... Uh, vectors and uh, velocity, which is the way you would want to do it. But anyway, for the fun of it, we're going to do it the long way. Uh, not recommended to do it this way, but we're going to do it this way anyway. Right off the bat, we're going to create our uh, C-sharp script, and we're going to call this ball uh, movement. And we will open it up. All right, so here we are inside of the ball script, and I'm going to go ahead and close down the project uh, solution explorer over here. I don't need that. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is create some variables. So over the top here, um, so since we're doing this a lot like the way we did it in Game Maker, we're going to make two variables for the X and Y. So our ball can move in two different directions, right? Our X axis and our Y axis. So I'm going to do a private uh, float. This is going to be velocity X. And I'm going to set that to 0, F. Make sure you throw that little F on there. By default, numbers in Unity are stored as doubles, which is uh, a lot bigger than a float. It's actually twice the size of a float, which is why they're called doubles. So uh, memory-wise, a float is a bit uh, less on resources, and if you don't need the precision, uh, don't store it. And then private float, we're going to do another vector, or uh, sorry, velocity uh, y, and then 0. Now just, to, just so you know, you can also store this as a vector 2D, or you can store it as a vector 3D. Um, no harm, no foul, either way you want to do it. Um, storing it in a vector is a little bit more convenient because you only have one variable to move around, but it's, it's going to work out to be the same. The reason why I'm not doing a vector 3D is we don't need our Z value, and I think doing a vector 2D would confuse people by having a third value that I'm not using. So anyway, uh, I digress. So we have our first two values, and also we want to have our paddle, um, or sorry, our ball, uh, starting speed. So I'm going to do a private, or sorry, a public value this time. Public. Uh, float. This is going to be the, um, I guess I'm going to call it this, we're going to call it ball speed. And we're not going to set a value here. We're actually going to set that in the editor. So I'm going to go ahead and just cap that off with a semicolon. We also want a, a variable to determine who's going to be serving. Is it going to be player one or player two? So I'm going to create a public bool. This is going to be is, uh, I'll say, serving paddle one. I'll set that to true. Okay. We also need to know some boundaries. So our left, right, up, and down boundaries. So we'll do um, public float. And I'll do screen. Uh, I'll do screen right. I don't know what that's going to be yet, so I'm going to set it to zero. Um, and then public float screen left. Public float screen uh, top. And then the screen bottom. So public float screen bottom. Okay, I'm going to come down um, to our start function. Now for the start, I'm going to have this check to see if a key is down. And instead of being, being start, I'm going to go ahead and change this to serve uh, ball. So serve ball. And I'm going to say um, if we hit the space bar, then we're going to serve it depending on who is serving. Uh, if input.getKeyDown. Now the difference between uh, 
getting a key versus getting a key up or down is getting a key checks it all the time whereas getting a key if it's up or down is a check once and then it doesn't continue to check that anymore so you can hold the key indefinitely and it would only check it the first time so it'll prevent it from turning it on and off over and over and over again so we're going to get our key and check if it's down and the key that we're checking for is going to be the spacebar key so and there I'll do uh, quotes and do space so if we're hitting the space key we need to then determine who is serving so if um, is serving paddle one and traditionally you would do an equals and then uh, whatever the value is the double equal means equal to and then whatever the value is but um, boolean values you actually don't need to do that you can just leave this part off and just say is the thing so uh, in this case is serving paddle one it's by default checking if it's true I don't even have to specify and then I can hit enter and then I can tell it to serve uh, one direction or the other so I'm going to say uh, velocity x is going to be equal to the ball speed and then I'll do an else because the only other possibility is if it's not true then it would be false so I don't have to say anything else uh, else velocity uh, x is going to be set to a negative ball speed okay I'm going to go ahead and come out of here and I'm also going to make another um, function here I'm going to do a void uh, move ball so we have the function for serving the ball but once the ball has been served we need to continuously move it now we could write the movement code inside of our update but I like being able to turn things on and off when I want to so I'm going to go ahead and do a move ball and then um, just write the movement code in here so just like we do with the paddle we're going to use the transform so transform and then uh, dot translate and open up some parentheses throw on a semicolon at the end and then inside of here we're going to write the movement code now again this is not the most efficient way of doing this uh, you're better off when you're having things that have to interact and collide with each other you're better off using the uh, physics engine so um, getting a rigid body and messing with velocities and that sort of thing uh, we're not doing that here but just wanted to know you're better off doing it the other way this is just so we can see how to do it this way and what the limitations are of doing it this way and why it's better to do it the other way and just like we did before we do a new vector 3 and actually before I do that I want you to see that you can do this without having to write it that way and I do a uh, velocity x and a velocity y and then 0 f and then I do my space and actually I don't even need to, need, need to do the space I can just do like this and this will run because it'll default to world space anyway so I'll leave this as it is we'll come back we'll clean this up but just so you can see you can do it this way without having to write the extra stuff uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do my serve ball and then my sir uh, move ball so inside of my update and to do uh, serve ball there we go make sure I get the semicolon on that and let's go ahead and do the move ball as well So it'll call this one and check to see who's serving and then this one will move all the time okay go ahead and go ahead and save it let's jump into uh, unity here we'll add our ball movement to our ball there it is we have our boundaries we haven't set them yet but it's okay and then the ball speed i'm going to do five go ahead play now it's set the, it's set to serve for paddle one so if it's serving paddle one it should shoot toward paddle two so I'm gonna go ahead and hit play and we're waiting for me to hit the space bar so here I go that was pretty quick let me go ahead and hit stop let's take that down maybe zero point um, one hit play space bar hey it moved but it went too quick and it moved in the wrong direction so two things I jump back into my code here um, depending on how your camera is set up so my camera is actually set up facing down the z-axis 
So I'm, I'm, or sorry, I'm facing up the z-axis. So I'm looking up the arrow. That means that my um, normally the screen is this way, and we're looking down the z-axis. But I ended up flipping it earlier when we made the project. Uh, normally, left of the screen is negative, right of the screen is positive. You can see the arrow direction. So we actually kind of set this up backwards. So if you follow along with me and you set it up backwards like I did, then instead of it going um, positively toward the right and negative toward, negatively toward the left, it's flipped. So I'm going to go back into here. I'm just going to go ahead and flip my sign here. So this is going to be the right in this case is going to be my negative, even though it normally would be the positive. So go ahead and save that. All right, hit play. And then spacebar. There it goes. That is a pretty quick ball. Now, of course, there's no collision. We're going to handle collision in a separate video. But for this one, I want to make sure we get the boundaries uh, in place. So let's go jump into our code here. In the move ball section, I'm going to set up the boundaries. So I'm going to do a, a little uh, comment here. I'm going to call this one ball boundary. And this one's going to be move uh, ball based on velocity. Okay. And of course, down here, our translate transform, or our transform translate function, it works just fine without having to do new vector three or specify a space. It does work just fine that way. I'm going to go ahead and just set this back. This is going to be uh, new. I'll do the vector three. Okay, put that in front, get my extra uh, parentheses over there. We will multiply this by the time dot uh, delta time. Now the reason why I'm adding this back in is since we're not using, um, you probably want to do this anyway, but since we're not using physics and we're trying to collide, um, eventually we want to collide our ball with our paddle. But since we're not using the physics engine and we're moving the objects based on their transform instead of the rigid body, it gets a little bit weird. So you do want to make sure that you're moving based on your frame rate and that we have the update uh, fixed to a specific frame rate. Okay, and we also want to set our world space. Um, I think I said earlier that this defaults to uh, world space, but it actually diverts to uh, local space. The default is local space. But then we're going to do space dot world here. All that's well and good. Okay, for the boundary, uh, pretty simple. I'm going to do uh, my up and down boundary first because those are easy. So if uh, transform dot position dot y. So the transform, the positions, the variable, and then the y of that um, is uh, less than or equal to whatever our upper boundary is. We're just going to flip. The, uh, the y direction. So I'm going to go ahead and do, uh, since up is going to be a positive, it's actually going to be gr uh, greater than or equal to. So greater than or equal to the screen uh, top. Now the same thing is going to happen on the screen bottom. So we're actually going to do this as an or. So to get this double bar, this means or. Um, if you look on your keyboard, just above the enter key, you'll see a uh, straight bar and a slash um, just hold shift and hit that twice to get the double bar. And then transform dot position y. This time we're going to do less than or equal to the bottom boundary. So screen bottom. So if either of these cases are true, we're going to flip the value. So velo uh, velocity uh, y, because y is up and down. We are going to set that to a negative value. Two ways of doing this, well, three ways of doing this. You could do it this way, um, equal to velocity y that is negative. But that's a bit to write, you know. Uh, another way to do it would be um, would be velocity <clears throat> times a negative one. Ah, if I can type. And that's even more to write. Okay. A shorthand would be 
to throw the uh, multiplication in front of the equal sign here and do minus one. That is the shorthand. A little bit less to the right ends up doing the same thing. So we're going to flip the math. Now I'll use this one as the ball boundary. Um, I'll call this the vertical boundaries. This one's going to be the horizontal uh, boundaries. These ones are a little bit different because when you get to the left or right of the screen, um, which way are you going to see that? It's going to be flipped on your end. Would this be left? It, it's whatever. <laughs> left and right of the screen, those, that's where uh, you're going to end up getting a score value and then the ball will reset. So we're going to have to create a um, situation for the ball to reset and then we can go back. So we're going to do these as separate things. I'll do uh, if um, transform dot position dot x is normally if you had this set up correctly if I had the camera in the correct direction and to the right was a positive value you'd be the x position greater than or equal to that spot and then the y and then the uh, left of it would be less than or equal to that spot since, but since my situation is reversed it's going to be the other way. So I'm going to do less than or equal to um, screen. And you know, to fix the math and to not have to have the headache of, uh, of solving this, I'm going to go ahead and just flip this. Bear with me. <laughs> I'm going to go in here and just fix this problem so I can do the math correctly without having to worry about uh, my actual directions here. So for the camera, this one we set it to uh, 180, but really we're actually better off leaving it as it was because math. So I'm going to set this to zero, so it faces the other way, and I'm going to take the z value that is in there and I set that to a negative. So this is going to flip the game around for me. And then for the paddles, my left, my player one should start on the left of the screen. So if I'm on here. Um, the arrow is to the right, which it should be. That's the positive direction. My paddle one is actually this guy. I'm going to set him to a negative 13. And I will set the rotation on him. So I'll grab the paddle uh, object here. I'll do a rotation of 180. And I come back down to paddle two. I'll set him to a, pa to a uh, positive 13. And I'll get the paddle here, and I'll do this as a 180 as well. Okay, the ball won't matter because I made the ball double-sided, so it doesn't really matter on that one. But at least this way, the math will be correct when we go to do it, and it'll be less of a headache. So let me go back and fix um, the comment this line out, and I'll flip these back my apologies but this is actually going to save us headaches later on so um, okay so now a positive value should go to the right and it is going very very slowly to the right in a positive direction okay so math checks out um, you don't have to do that at all, all the time, but in our particular situation, uh, it's easier if we have the math checking out left and right correctly. Um, okay, so now I can do this part without having to worry about flipping my thoughts backwards. So if we're greater than or equal to our, our screen right, then we're going to reset, and then the player one will get the score. So we're going to do um, uh, reset ball. Now, we don't have this function yet, so it's going to be angry at us. I'm going to do an else if um, transform transform.position 
dot x. And this time it'll be less than or equal to the screen left. We will also reset the ball there. Okay, serving paddle. I'm going to go ahead and make the uh, function for this. So I'll do void um, reset ball. And for my reset ball, I'm actually going to set a, uh, a parameter here. Um, I'm going to do a bool, and this is going to be, uh, I'm going to say uh, score. Uh, paddle one. So if it's if paddle one scored or if uh, paddle two scored, so scored paddle one, and then uh, if scored paddle one, we're gonna do some stuff for player one or for player two. Uh, so they're scored paddle one. I'll do. Um, then we're gonna do the uh, is paddle one serving. That's gonna be false. Because if we got the score over there, then it would be on their side. They would get the serve back. Or you could set it up if there's a number of serves, whatever or not. But I'm going to keep it simple. I'm doing else. Uh, is serving paddle one will be true. So if it scores on the other side, it'll be um, time for player one to serve. And then we want to set the ball back to its starting position. So for this, I'm going to... Uh, just set it to zero, so transform dot uh, position. And you can't force a position to have a value. Um, for example, I can't say position um, and then shove numbers into there. So if I try to do, you know, zero, uh, zero, zero, if I tried to do this, I'd get yelled at. It would say, hey, you can't convert this. Um, cannot be used like a method, right? So for this, we actually have to consider, keep this as a variable and then set it to a new vector. So, so I could do new uh, vector three and then do zero, 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 but I don't like using magic numbers. So to avoid doing this here, I'm going to create a new variable called start location, or you can say start position. So start position. But we have to go make this. I'm going to go back up to the top here. And underneath all of this stuff, let's do um, private. Uh, bom, 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 bom. This is going to be a vector 3. This is going to be start uh, position. And that's going to be equal to a new uh, vector 3, 0f, 0f. Okay, so now we have our start position. We can talk to that later. We wanted to change it to something else. There we go. Now, if we come back up, you can see that our um, our reset ball. They're very angry. Uh, this one's angry because I left it with a colon. It should be a semicolon. Uh, but this, these two are both angry because we created a. Um, a parameter in here and so when you create a function with a value here you've given it a parameter but when you call a function um, it wants to accept an argument which is the result of that parameter so uh, for this I need to um, give it a value so if we're scoring on the right of the screen that means that the player one has scored so that would be true If we serve, if we score on the left of the screen, then that was player two that scored. So it would not be player one. In this case, it would be a false. And that would be happy. Okay. And then down here, I forgot to do one at one thing, but we'll see what I forgot in just a second. So I go ahead and play it. Go ahead and save it. And then let's check it. Everything's updating. Cool, cool, cool. Hit play. All right, so if I hit spacebar, it's going to roll. Oh, it's moving really slowly. All right, let's go see what's going on in there. 
Uh, surf ball, that's cool. Move ball. Ah, you know what we never did? We never set our boundaries. Let's go back to here. Now take the uh, game view. I'm going to snap it to the side here. All right. Let's move this out. Grab the ball. The upper boundary, I'm going to just move the up arrow. Uh, up boundary is, for me, 6.4. And then my far boundary is 14.2. I'll set that back to 0, set that back to 0. And then down here, from my right, I'm going to do 14. I'm going to do a little bit more than that, 14.5. And then my left will be negative 14.5. And then my top, what did I say, 6.2, 6.4? And then a negative 6.4. Let's make this speed a little bit faster. I'll do 0.5. There we go. Moving right along. Still kind of slow. Let's make that a bit faster. Let's do a one. Okay, so it's going, 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 slow. Again, no collision, but I hit the boundary, and it reset. Cool. Now, once it resets, we should actually tell it to uh, stop moving. That way the game can start again. But uh, that seems to be working. And we're also, once we're over here, we really should um, go the other direction. But it's not going the other direction because... The function that is checked for serving only happens whenever we hit the spacebar. So now I can hit the spacebar again, and I can go the other direction. You can see if I keep hitting the spacebar, though, uh, nothing happens because it's already set. But once it gets here, it should reset and allow me to go this way. So uh, a few seconds <laughs> as it goes, three, two, one, I hit that. And then I can hit spacebar and I go that way. So we want to make sure that we stop it so that the game uh, may continue. So let's go back in on our reset ball. Uh, just before the transform here, I'm going to also set the velocity. So velocity x will be 0 again. And then the velocity uh, y will also be 0. And everything will be set back again. So I'll go ahead and label this. It's going to be uh, check score. And this one's going to be um, reset uh, default values. Uh, I'll say default uh, velocity and position. That should be good. Let's check that again. Make this go a bit faster because 5 is just too small. Better. Game reset. I can go the other way. Game reset. Cool. And then let's test the up and down uh, value. To do that, I'm just going to fiddle with this. Because we have no collision at the moment. So I'm just going to set my uh, velocity x and y. Um, so I'll just set this to that. So if this is working, it should bounce, and it does. Hey, the bouncing works. All right, let's go ahead and set that back to where it was. It's going to be the x. This is the x as well. And we should be good here. Um, not much else we can do in this video. In the next one, we're going to go ahead and take a look at um, handling the collision with the paddle and also resetting the paddle when the game resets. And then after that, we'll do the, the scoring. And then we should be pretty good. Um, but yeah, save your work, and I shall see you next time. Hey guys, thanks for checking out the channel. Misty and I both thank you. If you enjoyed that video you just watched, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe. Also, if you'd like to support the channel, uh, I'm getting into NFTs. 
those are those are big these days. I was thinking about creating my own coin, but we'll we'll get into that uh, at a later date. But uh, NFTs are pretty pretty hot right now. I'm converting my artwork to NFTs. You can see my uh, rareable uh, page right here. Well, I got four items, but I'm adding one uh, as they go. They're not cheap to make, so I gotta gotta make them as they go. Um, if you wanna you know support the channel other ways, of course there's Lambda Studios merch, which you can see right here on my Teespring store, as well as Amazon. Speaking of Amazon. I have my books up there uh, under Bruce RF, which is my pen name. Um, Life and Times of Donna Martin, as well as The Guardian's Path of Ascension. You can flip through those and see the reviews and um, yeah, you know, grab a copy, read it, tell me what you think. It helps me out as an author. It also helps me out as, you know, it all everything goes back into the stuff that I'm doing. So uh, more content for you. If you want to keep up with me throughout the day, or just kind of see what I'm, what's going on in life, uh, hit me up on Twitter under uh, BruceRF1. Again, that is my pen name. If you want to see uh, what's going on in my blog, RonFlowersJr.me, you can see what I'm writing about, um, what else is going on in life, uh, difficulties that I have with my uh, projects that I'm working on. Um, a lot of my devlog stuff kind of goes there before it comes here, so it's another way of kind of getting into that. I do also have a Patreon where I release content early if you want to get access to uh, things ahead of time. Because uh, most of the stuff that I produce, I'd like to, I do things on Sundays and I post on Wednesdays most often, but it goes to um, Patreon first. So it's kind of there usually a week or so ahead of time and then it has a release schedule. So if you want to see things early, go there. Uh, let's see, what else? What else is going on? Uh, you can also follow me on Facebook under, um, you can do the Lame Duck Studios Facebook or the Bruce RF uh, Facebook. Both of those are available. And a lot of these links are down in the description. So if you want to just like, hit those up and just click on them and follow them through. That's another way of getting there. Also, we are at 1,300 subscribers. Woo! Uh, we're this close to 10,000, but small milestones first. Let's get to 2,000 subscribers, and then we will continue our road building toward uh, that 10,000 milestone. That is going to be pretty, pretty awesome for this channel, my humble, humble channel. So, yeah, that's, that's all I have for you on this outro. It's a bit of a long one with a lot of stuff going on. Anyways, stay tuned, and I shall see you next time.